We'll begin our Mass in about one minute. Thank you. Wait for the Lord, be strong, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Spirit. Brothers and sisters, before we begin our Mass, just uh, two things to comment, just to invite anybody who would like to have a conversation with me, uh, just to call, uh, certainly uh, call the, re the rectory, call the, uh, the main number, and uh, follow the directions to leave a message for me if I don't actually pick up, or call the emergency number that's also uh, uh, on, on that recording. I'm happy to speak with anybody who would like to speak with me. And then either later today or more likely tomorrow, we'll send out a constant contact email, hopefully with uh, the schedule of what we're going to broadcast and at what time for Palm Sunday and uh, for the, the Triduum for Easter and Easter Sunday. And, and so on. So we'll, we'll do that very soon. So please watch for that. And again, if you're hearing this and you haven't been getting email, emails, then please leave us uh, an email or a phone message with your email address so we can reach out to you or, or help others to, to do the same. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. 
O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call, answer me speedily. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Let this be written for the generation to come and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height, from heaven he beheld the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, he is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, you belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them what I told you from the beginning. I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true in what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Our readings might seem a little bit obscure today, but uh, we have the two images from the the, um, the first reading from the first uh, the the uh, from the Old Testament, where the the people are complaining, "Why have you brought us to this terrible place? Uh, uh, God has liberated them from slavery, but now they're complaining along the way, and so God sends the seraph serpents to uh, uh, to 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 bite them, um, and then they repent of their ways." Uh, but the image is then that this pole, the serpents are lifted on a pole as an image of uh, their being healed of this this um, affliction. But that pole, of course, and that lifting up is an image already of the crucifixion of Christ. And that's why we fast forward now to this gospel. In two places in the gospel, Jesus refers to himself as I am. For if you do not believe that I am, and then again he's saying to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am. And his critique of the Pharisees is they will die in their sins because they do not believe that I am. That formula of I am comes back to Moses, and it represents a, if you could say, a theological process. And it's this. In the early days when Elijah was going out and trying to help people believe that there was only one God 
and that one God was the God of Israel. The belief was that there were many gods, and they needed to be appeased in this way, in that way, and the other way. There was much superstition around it. So the first insight is that there was only one God, and that God is Yahweh, um, the one God, the God of Israel. Uh, but then in the, in the conversation where Moses then has a conversation with God, and he says, uh, in what way can we address you? How can we call to you? For God had been distant and impersonal and just seen as uh, someone, uh, a being that needed to be appeased, uh, not, a loving, uh, um, not a loving creator, but uh, someone who really could not be understood. And so God says to Moses, tell them, I am. So I am is the name of God, the self-proclaimed name of God. And so for the first time allows his chosen people to address him, to pray to him, to speak to him in a personal way as a personal God. So this is a major change in the, in the understanding of who God is and who we are in relationship with God. And then along with that, the promise that God will send a Messiah, and uh, that Messiah, of course, is Jesus Christ. And so that's really what's on the table, if you will, in the conversation in the gospel today. You will die in your sins because you do not believe that I am. That to say I am is to say that I am God. I am the one sent. I am the personal God who has come to save you. So while it's a little bit of a challenging gospel, the message is really clear in a sense is that Christ has come to save us. He will be lifted up on that tree, on that crucifix, to suffer, die, and die for our sins. And uh, as God himself, he saves us. So we give thanks today, really, for this tremendous uh, solicitude, this favor of God who has allowed his people over so many years to come to understand that he is not distant or impersonal or um, letting the universe just roll away on its own, but rather invites conversation, invites a personal engagement with him by giving us his name, and then uh, by then giving us his son, who is I am, who has come to save us. God himself comes to save us, and he invites us to bring all of our needs before him. that the church may continue to be purified and sanctified through the grace and mercy of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That national and international leaders may be empowered by the Holy Spirit in serving their people as Christ came to serve, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That those who have turned from God may receive from him the grace of conversion, let us pray to the Lord. That this Lenten season may be a time of growing in the gifts of God has given us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That all who have died may be united with Christ in heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for Elsa Paul, whom we remember at this Eucharist in a special way, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, hear and graciously accept the prayers we offer you. We ask this as all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, 
the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. I invite you to offer each other a sign of peace at home. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite you to join in the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself, says the Lord. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we'll offer Pope Francis's prayer to Mary in time of pandemic. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.